Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Commander Clash podcast. This week, we are talking about something very specific. Something that maybe I was a little bit ranty on in, in previous uh, Commander-related uh, stuff on the YouTube channel. And that's uh, that's a new staple uh, in Mono Whites. This is Esper Sentinel. Uh, it's showing up on the screen right now. Uh, if you are on Spotify, I'm just going to read it out as well. Uh, Esper Sentinel is a card from Modern Horizons 2. It costs one white mana for an artifact creature, Human Soldier. It's a 1-1, one -one, so pretty tiny. But what you're really playing it for is its powerful uh, triggered ability that says whenever an opponent casts their first non-creature spell each turn, draw a card unless that player pays X, where X is Esper Sentinel's power. So basically, this is kind of very reminiscent to a Mystic Remora slash Ristic Study. Uh, it's a one drop and it triggers off non-creature spells like Mystic Remora. Um, but, and if you don't pay for it, then the, the owner of the Esper Sentinel gets to draw a card. Very similar in that regard. But also, it's like a lot less uh, taxi than the Remora. Remora costs four uh, Esper Sentinel, at least at the beginning, costs only one because its base power is one. Um, so that's more reminiscent of Rhystic Study. And also, it doesn't have a cumulative upkeep as well, um, which is also more aligned with Rhystic Study. So it's somewhere in between that. And it's also once per turn. Uh, it's not like unconditionally as many times. I, it can trigger as many times as, as you want uh, per turn. So if you just pay the first tax or you just avoid the first tax and every subsequent non-creature spell you cast uh, throughout that turn uh, doesn't get triggered any further. We've all, I think we've all established here that this card is pretty good. It's pretty good uh, at, at the table. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, especially in the context of how bad white is at drawing cards. Like, yeah. if this was a blue card, would it be pretty good? Probably not. But as a white card, I think it's pretty insane. As a white card, it also probably, if, the, if this were blue, that once a turn clause would be removed. So I, I, I do, I do think true. that that is a very, it's like a powerful card, but I don't see the point at all in just make not making it just whenever they cast anybody casts a spell as well, many times i think that'd be very powerful but i i think I, white wants be, the card draw uh, i, I feel like that'd be, be that would be really strong especially once you pump it like it, it, paying one for every spell is one thing but once you have a sword or a batter skull or something on yeah. this and it's pay five then then it's like isn't just like the best card advantage spell in the format or something we should probably <laughs> like we should tax kill it. matters seth <laughs> yeah, whether yeah, it's you, one it's... or five no one is paying it yeah which is why this card is, well, is steely broken you all pay for it sometimes i'm not paying for it but i've seen all of you pay for these effects before it disappoints me every time <laughs> but i but you know, well. I, I guess yeah <laughs> I, for me like i I, th I think that something like this should just trigger every spell so i think it, that would be absurdly strong though imagine if this was still if it, if it was a three mana creature then i can understand removing the once once for like the first spell each turn but it's a one drop that's absolutely insane and, and not to mention to it has like creature but you can you could also pump up its power level too. It, it scales with that as well. Um, it doesn't have any cumulative upkeep like Mystic Remora. It's an yeah. artifact creature, so I feel like it has more inherent synergy than being an enchantment. Like sure, it dies easier, but you can get it back with Sun Titan. Uh, you can get it back. You can tutor it up with like Ranger of Eos and Ranger Captain of Eos. Um, this is good. I don't know. I, I think I think if you push it any further, it would be pretty insane. I feel like this card is. Is like as it's like the next best. It's like the best white card we've seen since Smothering Tithe. I think, like this card I, is going to uh, be insane. I think Smothering yeah, Tithe I, is I agree better. Too. <laughs> but that's because Smothering mean, Tithe happens every time. Yeah. So, uh, like that, that. That's the once a turn is definitely. It it, it knocks it down a peg in my book. But drawing a card is more powerful than getting a treasure, too. Like, I would say. Maybe, yeah. Like, because okay. all the treasures in the world don't do anything for you if you don't have cards to cast with them. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. I I mean, I, I, I like, I think I'm going to value the, like, the, because, like, Smothering Tithe happens every time you draw, and that's why I'll, I'll not, like, it's on a higher tier of power for me, even if it's just treasures as opposed to card draw. Uh, and and I, I think treasures... 
I mean, having all the mana in the world, though, does mean you can do a lot. You can just, you draw that one spell, and then you just go off. A blue sun zenith, and I'll draw a ton of cards. But how are you going to draw that one spell without Esper Sentinel? Krim. Hmm. I mean, <laughs> you just hope you get lucky. Live off the top. I mean, so I, I feel this card will be banned on Commander Clash pretty quickly. I feel like the average number of cards you draw will be like five or something off this thing. Right, you slap it out in turn one. Seth will definitely ramp and growth straight into it. Yeah, right? <laughs> Tomer will soul <laughs> ring, time. cultivate, whatever. Right, sure, I only draw one instead of two, but I'm already up two cards. And then Krim turns around, he'll pass go because he's holding counter magic, and like no one will be able to remove it. Right, you use your Hagra mauling, I get a card back anyway because you can't afford the tax yet. So, yeah. this card is insane, and I hate these kind of cards because in a vacuum, they're okay. Like, if if Reduke, LSV, and all like the pros sat down to play a game of CDH, they would play around this card correctly. They would respect the card draw. They would count it as a Thalia and just play slow. And then this mm -hmm. card would do nothing. It'd be like the worst card ever made. You know, right? Instead, what we do is like we hate tax. We we hate stacks so much. We'll just ignore the clause. Right? We're afraid that while well, Tomer's going to play into it, we I'm before Tomer, I might as well play into it as well because Tomer's going to play into why it. Am and, I, you know, why am I being thrown under the bus on not playing? I'm just saying, I, all of us do this, right? Where huh. the you may want to pay for it, but you think the next guy is not going to pay for it. And you don't want to be the guy left out, right? You don't want to be the guy who didn't, you know, play spells and got left behind. So we all just like rush into it. And then... <laughs> they draw like eight cards and they win the game. And we're like, well, how did that happen? <laughs> right? And it always happens. Every time we play a Rhystic study and it happens so much that it's banned from Commander Clash, right? And we it's quote unquote, know what we're doing, <laughs> right? So I, I like, really dislike it. Yeah. I, I love these effects, so. <laughs> so I was, I was also just going to, I'm going to throw out this, this subject and then, <clears throat> and then I'll let Seth speak, but. So I was, I was kind of moving into this, but as for Sentinel, the reason why we brought up the entire thing are, are these tax effects good for Commander? That was a subject. You're going to see it in the YouTube video or the YouTube video in Spotify. That's a subject. So there it is. Boom. All right. Now continue, Seth. Sorry about that. I just need to so, throw no, that out there. You're, 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 Intro you're good. <laughs> I, think the problem, I think the problem is if you are, we all could play around these cards correctly. The problem is, I don't think that playing around them leads to a fun game of Commander because it takes a lot of time. Like that's the biggest thing. Like when you're casting your first spell or you're drawing your card on your upkeep with a smothering tithe out and you got a handful of cards and you're trying to think, okay, I cast this card draw spell. What could I draw into? How much mana would I need for that? To really like play optimally, like you were playing a pro tour, you're gonna have to spend five minutes sitting there and thinking through your turn. Is that how you wanna play a game of commander? Like I don't. So my default is just, I just don't pay because I don't wanna think about it. I wanna like cast my cool things and like have a fun game of commander. I don't wanna sit there and like try to, you know, grind out every percentage point of like, being optimal so so my way of dealing with it is i just as a blanket rule i don't pay if i know a hundred percent i'm not gonna need my mana for anything then i probably will pay but if there's some chance that i might draw into something that would require that mana i'm just not gonna do it and i don't want to spend 10 minutes thinking through my turn because that feels really bad and just really slows down the game for everyone i 100 percent agree which is why this card is a one mana draw 10 and is that applied <laughs> magic card no so don't print it right like don't print this fake up like fake downside it's like saying phyrexian mana has downside like it does not okay like this thing yeah maybe once in a blue moon tomer will actually pay the tax right but you what's will just what's me you're the no, only I, one that pays yeah. the tax in our group right you yeah. will pay the tax sometimes tomer, but tomer it will draw will like five pay. cards right? even seth has been good about it too remember when i shamed him really hard one game and he paid for the That's rest of the only because he had nothing to do because he his <laughs> hand was empty and he had nothing to do will he ever pay the tax right well, this, i mean i'm still proud of you so <laughs> Wait, well, well, thank you tomer and we know tomer will not only pay the tax but he'll kill asper sentinel over in a ugin with a impending yeah, true. <laughs> we, we learned that he, so. we did not know he was gonna alt he had a default skate <laughs> in his hand if i knew he had a default skate in his hand obviously i would blow up the ogun my God, that's how powerful the card is right it's like three mana draw 10 right and, so yeah <laughs> That 
my my issue with this is, is twofold. First of all, I, I don't think it's as clear cut as whether or not you should never pay for the tax. I feel like certain high impact cards you should just cast anyway and your opponent will draw a card and that's fine. Uh, I think there's like nuance that. And also, when we were talking, you Richard, you brought up like Reed Duke and LSV. If they're playing CEDH, they'll play around it correctly. Um, we also went over to play to win one time. Uh, editor, put make the card over there. We did a little collab video um, to play to win. And a minor spoiler, but uh, in the first game that we played, Ristic Study, somebody played an early Ristic Study, and it wasn't us that was like just casting all our spells willy nilly into it. It was like some veterans into uh, of CDH just casting into uh, into the Ristic Study because they. And their, their uh, reasoning behind it was like, if I don't cast my spells, I'm going to fall too far behind. So I need to do, I need to establish a board state because if I don't, I, I don't, I don't have a chance at winning. Turns out, well, it's a spoiler, uh, but, you know, given the person who had, uh, given the person who had risk excited like 15 cards every single turn cycle, you're just not going to win period. So I think it's e even for like veterans, like very experienced CDH people who, play that as their primary mode of magic they'll still get it wrong and you and like you're just always going to screw over the table with it like it's just so deceptively powerful were, were there any notion thieves there weren't any notion thieves problem solved <laughs> no, you, you have, no manner to <laughs> cast notion thieves thief. yeah, there were hull breachers, there were hull breachers and oh there was yeah on that's just as good if i recall that's, that's just as good see but like like i i okay i i do think blue. that you kind of have to like when you see a Ristic study and effects like that, you do have to weigh in. Is the card that the opponent's going to draw? What I'm doing is it better than giving my opponent a card? Like it, I, I'm not going to far seek into a Ristic study because that's not worth a card draw. But I will let the Ristic study give the player a card if I'm let's just going to say resolve a Narset or or like a Teferi or something like that. Cards like that, high impact cards. I'll I'll, I'll take the trade. Here, let's see if your one card is better than this. So, like, and that, and that's how, and also with more free spells, I don't mind because then I can back up my powerful spells. You draw a card, I doubt your card's gonna be better than what I'm gonna do. And, but I, like, like so, uh, that, but I guess the correct theoretical way that no one plays. Yeah, I mean, just I, just like a counter spell, I play that way. It's effectively a doom blade if you have no ETB. Yet people get incredibly salty over a counter spell, but not a doom blade. Right. right like you're supposed I, to play like the way Krim outlined but very few people do because they'll be like well i can ramp and then after i ramp that turn i'll play my haymaker and i'll catch up right right and and like nobody in our play group was realistically playing it that way that's why we had to get rid of it it was just like <laughs> we I, got rid I of was, a reason right i yeah, was for good reason i'm not bl i'm not blaming yeah. anybody but like yeah it's just not a fun <laughs> it's not a fun effect I feel and, like you're, and, the, 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 you're targeting Seth. <laughs> I, 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 disagree with the, I disagree with the entire premise of this. I actually think, like, let's go back to Esper's Sentinel. You play that on turn one. You got a mana rock in hand for your second turn. I think the correct thing to do is cast it. I don't, you're playing a four player game. One person getting one card, that's less impactful than me playing off curve for the rest of the game. Like, I think you have to cast your rampant I mean, that, That's true, but then everyone does like, that, and they're up five cards by the time it comes back to them, right? And it's a one mana draw five, <laughs> right? Or I mean, draw, I, draw that's, three. That's why right? the, in this case, but and you can't mention like had earlier, everyone you, else. Well, well you, you can't you let one person it was, ahead. It's like Thalia. imagine, yeah, imagine I slapped on a Thalia. You have no choice. You all slow down, right? And the game is fine. The game is not broken. Like you didn't all fall behind and like squander your decks away right it was all yeah. fine right but no one sees this as a folio they see it as i don't know do whatever you want and then the other person <laughs> well, gets an like, advantage right but it should be like, a thalia right but yeah in theory in theory it could just be a thalia or, or what really what it really is is a one-sided sphere of resistance which is absolutely busted if you think about it. like that's it's that's it's uh low end right the low end is you're getting you're paying like one mana for a one-sided sphere of resistance or whatever, which is just bonkers. And the upside is it sometimes also draws you cards as well, which is bananas. So in theory, yes, it could be a one-sided uh, sphere of resistance where the person who has a tax effect is still getting up ahead of you. Um, but in reality, what it's going to be is it could be a Thalia for one person and it trades secrets 
for the other two people where both like both the owner and the person who's not willing to pay the tax are getting ahead because they're like, well, I don't want to fall behind on board. I'm just going to cast my spells. I don't care. And the person who owned it is like, well, okay, I'll just draw a bunch of cards too. So we both benefit. And the person who actually ends up paying the tax uh, falls behind and they're like, well, screw it. If I'm, if I'm just going to will willfully fall behind, I'm not going to, to adhere to this either. And then it just like gives the game to the owner of it. And it's just like, yeah. it's just like a lose-lose situation in, in, in practice. And, e and like I said, we've seen it even at CDH tables. They fall prey to the exact same issue. It's not just like, oh, our casual people, uh, the casuals, well, they're, they're too smooth brained to, to figure out the, the correct line to play. It's like everybody falls prey to We're this. We're too smooth brained. It's banned from Commander <laughs> Club. It's banned. No, we just don't we can't, we can't play it. around this card. It's so, too strong. So what do you think? <clears throat> what do you think the correct line of play is then? You really think it's correct to be like, okay, you just like dally the table for the game and you get to do all your stuff and play all your mana rocks and pull way ahead, like soul ring on turn one style? You're, you're one don't turn you slower, right? Yeah, you're you, you, you ramp the growth on turn three when you can pay the tax, right? Unfortunately, and then I also everyone will murder this person with the Esper Sentinel. It's fine. I also <laughs> right? have to like... unfortunately agree with Krim here too. Krim's most common thing about talking about problematic cards is run more removal. This is a good reason for, for having more interaction in your decks because like Esper Sentinel is like one of the most, like I, I look at this card and like this is one of the scariest things uh, to keep on the battlefield because it draws too many cards. Same with like Rhystic Study, same with Mystic Remora because we know just from experience how quickly these things get out of hand. So we, we decks need to have consistent ways, like eight, eight or so ways of dealing with a one one that's problematic. And if every single deck at the table has eight ways of dealing with a problematic instant, hopefully somebody could find something to deal with it before it gets out of hand. Yeah. And 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 like much like how we always now need to pack what is essentially graveyard hate in every deck building right, uh, part, you should always have graveyard hate. I think you should really have a lot more removal uh, in every deck because a simple one, one, maybe a, let's call it a two, two, whatever, like shouldn't be the downfall of the whole game, right? Like I look at it as just, I'm going to slow my game plan down. And maybe that's just because all my decks are slow to begin with. So I never rush to like expedite this plan out. Right. And that's the difference between my decks and like the people that are trying to curve out immediately, like, have no curve. Cons what anyway, curve? It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> what it's curve am I doing? Just, okay, what if untapped. this card was red? Okay, and instead of the owner drawing a card, this thing lightning axes your face. Yeah, you be like rampant growth thing, soul ringing straight into it. We're I'm talking about Rurik know. Thar, basically. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Would you really, like, let's like, say it was one man of Rurik Thar. Well, you would oh obviously God. slow down and pay the tax and not like murder yeah. yourself in two yeah. turns, right? Right. And like, that's, that's true. I think that's just the biggest thing. And with, with three other people at the table playing the same game of commander, you all should, between the three card pulls you have, somebody's got to have an answer. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> somebody's got to have an answer for these cards. Uh, like a card like Droneth Magistrate, all these problematic creatures, they're not going to stop printing them. So the, the thing here is you need to be able to interact and, that's, uh, but that's, but, but let's say about something like Ristic Study, where it's not a creature. You should also pack enchantment removal in ways to interact in some way and or slow down your game plan. Like that, that's the biggest thing. These effects, I don't think are that problematic. I look at them all as Thalia, uh, Thorn of the Amethyst or whatever, all these effects. That's just how I look at all of them. And that's why I'm okay. Like, I just don't care. I, I just slow my game plan down. But, but do we want people to have to play Crim Drago control to have to be able to play commander. Like, well, is, no, is that even, is that even, what we want the format to be? Like everyone has to play ten ras, ten removal spells, ten counter spells, and then you play a couple notion thieves, and <laughs> and that's your plan. <laughs> I think no, it's not a bad play, but, but, but I get it. <laughs> it's not a also, bad play. That's also my main issue with it. And and while I agree with Crib, this is the this is solution, right? Like if you are in a meta with Esper Sentinel and Rhystic Seti and, and Mystic Remora, then the, the correct way of playing is to slow down your game plan and pack more removal so you can actually deal with it or else either way, even if you play around it or you or you don't play around it. If you don't play around it, the the owner of this ability is going to win the game very quickly. If you don't play, if you do play around it, you're still in a losing position because you still have to. You're now a turn behind on everything. Um, so either way, you need to get it rid of it. It's just incredibly powerful. My problem with this card and with Mystic Remora and with Rhystic City 
is the cards are so powerful. And they're not just annoying and like deceptively powerful. They're also so under-costed for their effect. Like as for Sentinel, I feel it not being a one, it could be more than a one, one mana. It could have been easily and still see a lot of play. The problem when they're so cheap and so powerful means they're going to be very popular. And you're not going to just see them at high level tables. You're going to see them also at low level tables. Like I, I, when I go to my LGS and stuff in, in, in the before times, obviously, um, and hopefully soon, uh, soon as well. Uh, Risk of Study was in every blue deck. It's just like a default, you know, like just in a casual deck, everybody was running Risk of Study because why wouldn't you? Um, it wasn't seen as like a super competitive try hard or whatever type uh, type card. It was just, you just put it in every single blue deck. Why not? Um, I think as for Sentinel, if the price isn't like 30-ish dollars, uh, it's going to show up in a lot of white decks too. And that's kind of the issue where like Seth's concern is like, what, you want to just, everybody has to run draw gro- go to, to, to play a regular casual game of commander. I don't want that either. I think the, the fact that these cards are so pushed, so powerful and so popular makes it, makes it really scary for me. I really don't like it. I really don't like it. Like I, I, I'm happy the white got some card draw, but I don't want to be in the situation where every single time I shuffle up to play a game of commander, even at, even at casual tables, casual ca- tables, where I just want to play like, I don't know, Kithkin or whatever. Uh, I'm going to be facing up, every, every single white deck is going to have Esper Sentinel. Every single blue deck is going to have, you know, um, Rhystic Study and, and Mystic Remora. Like, I, I, like, then you don't even have the ability to not run like, you know, Drago Control at that point if you want to play a fair magic. I, I, I think the idea also, like, that casual magic can't, like, like, like ca- what casual magic means is that you just can't play these tax effects and that we could just turn off our brain and just play whatever and play into every trap that we like can. That's, I think that's not necessarily a, a good thing either for casual magic. I think we should still play around things. <laughs> like, like, I, I don't I know. That's asking too much, Crim. <laughs> is that, is that like, asking? Am I, am I just is. being spiky? Is that we what it is? We couldn't <laughs> because you didn't room. come to play around things right like Seth said right you came to play your jank combo right right and for the same reasons you don't want to get winter orbed or blood mooned okay right? in, in which case the whole game warps around that you don't want to do your thing right either this card becomes one of those tax effects right where you have to warp everything the whole table is warped around it or the owner just wins the game because they drew eight billion cards off of it so I feel that's a bit much to ask for everyone, even spikes included, right? But, but like casual <laughs> players who just came to play their deck, right? Like you're, you're not here, quote unquote, try harding, right? You're not packing all this removal and making sure you're good for the meta, right? You just wanted to cast whatever new, you know, mythic you opened in the latest booster. And then this guy over here drew 80 cards off Esper Sentinel and is controlling the whole game and you can't do anything, right? But but it's not like... Okay, I let's just say this is a casual board game night, not even Magic the Gathering. I'm still yeah. playing around, like, like I, in Monopoly, I play around things, right? That's because so, you're a spike at heart, Krim. I'm the most casual. <laughs> I, I try to play a, a wedge that is dead in every format, okay? <laughs> Except it's, for, like, maybe Commander. But the thing like, here is... I don't know. Maybe maybe that's just the way I play the game. But I feel like we should be playing just e- casual. Commander doesn't mean that you just go up. Oh, well, there's but, but a. Do there's you a not agree? Sign casual players get Going salty right over counter spell. They get like, salty this, over everything. This is a known <laughs> fact, right? They, so they, they will get salty over this, oh, right? Oh, hundred percent, a hundred percent. Salt we factor. We can't change that, right? In, we can't in magic. That. If if you play an island they will be salty. Like how if I see a forest, I'm immediately going to kill you. Like that's just how I like, you know what I mean? Like that's in casual magic there. It's, it's really weird. I, I like you had mentioned earlier, a doom blade is the same as a counter spell. So I, I, I don't, I don't understand the, the salt towards a counter spell. I, like it's, I get countered all the time. Psychological. It's, it's, it's a psychological. Like, psychological I, yeah. I can tell you, cause I, I, I remember I got tilted fairly recently on on some some board it's, it's more like this this is the situation with, with counter spell to me like doom blade um is just not as effective as counter spell nine times out of ten first of all it doesn't stop with anything with enter the battlefield triggers you still get some value like if you eternal witness if you cast like eternal witness you know doom blade's not gonna 
you're going to blow up a two one or whatever. Who cares? I still got my effect out of it. Um, also, a doom blade can't, you know, doom blade an enchantment. It can't stop an a, an art uh, a sorcery. It can't stop an instant or something like that. The counter spell just has so much more flexibility over a doom blade. And if you're in position, like if the, if a blue player basically is basically like uh, like allowing you to uh, play your turn out with untapped mana, and then either they counter your your best spell every single turn, or they just draw cards. It just feels like it feels like you've already lost. Like. Like the black player throwing a doom blade at one of your creatures, like you might have gotten some value out of that creature. You could have probably let slip like an enchantment or something like that. It's more of that that lockdown feeling of where the blue player literally can stop any spell you cast for the rest of the game. And the longer the game drags on, just the more chances that they just squeeze you. It's like an it's like a bow constrictor that just like stops you, stifling you from from playing anything. Whereas the like, black player, okay, he's one for oneing. My creatures or whatever but i can at least cast sorceries i can at least cast instants i can at least do something i mean just like this draw grow counter all your things stuff it just feels really miserable to play against i'd much rather just die you know just hit me <laughs> with like a 2020 <laughs> put me out of my misery it's it's like dying to like a rusty spoon if you ever saw that that meme like the rusty spoon death just like kill me like just let me go on to the next game where i actually have a chance instead of just like dragging it out forever maybe maybe it's all the snapcaster beats that i'm like okay it's, i can it's, i can sit here and get beaten down by a one one while you counter me out of the game it's the fear of the unknown you want the false hope that like something will happen right and when a blue player counters you right it's, it's two things right it's Blue can counter and blue can draw cards. So you have this fear that every card they draw is a counter spell. In reality, if you ever play control, you're drawing like land, flooded strands land. and, land. and land. you're like, I got nothing, dude. Right. But the yeah. other side is terrifying, right? You're like, that guy has like eight staff casters and a cryptic somehow. I'm not getting through anywhere. Yeah. And it's pure psychology. It's just psychological, right? And I right, think that's right. it's a known thing, right? Casual players do not like counter spells. That's why we don't put counter spells in a standard. And we know that casual players don't like tax effects. So making these like fake tax effects don't matter. So uh, I'll, I'll give you a good example of CDH. I play a lot of CDH. You blood moon the table, everyone goes berserk, okay? There's like three, <laughs> like five color storm decks at the table. They will do everything to get rid of the tax effects. And I'm like, okay, you got rid of the tax effects. What's your plan? And they pass the turn and the next guy just wins. And I'm like, where was your plan, right? You, all you, All they had in their mind was... I need to remove this tax effect, even though I got nothing to do afterwards and it's keeping the table at bay and they just remove it and then we all lose. And I'm like, okay. It could, literally, <laughs> right? it could be literally saving you the game. Yeah. But you're not really thinking about it like that, right? Like you're like, oh, it's preventing me from casting spells. I wanted, I came, sat down to play this game to cast spells and therefore it doesn't work. CDH, I feel like there's not really an excuse there. Cause like, you, it's the same, player, even if you want to win, they, yeah. they get blood in their eyes, right? They're like, like, wow, you're stopping me from doing what I want to do. I need to remove it yeah. at the and expense it, of the whole table, right? It, it's also also about managing expectations. Like at CDH, I feel like you should be expecting stacks effects as part of part of the game. Uh, but like at a casual table, you're you're not, you're, that's not what, the, the, what you want to sit down to see. Um, and I totally get that because like, I also play competitive, well, I don't play a lot of CDH, but like when I sit down and play CDH, um, I'm expecting to play around counters. It's like an intricate puzzle that I want to solve. If somebody blood moons me and it hurts me, I'm thinking, well, who comes out on top here? When blood moon does get removed, am I going to be in a good position to actually win the game off there? Like I'm just trying to set myself up so that that my opponents don't win the game and I try to win the game as soon as Blood Moon is removed. I'm not like, oh no, you Blood Moon, how dare he? That's so rude. That's Spirit spirit of the EDH or something like that. And I've also like played Mono Blue Control and like Popper for like years and years before I even went into Commander. I totally understand the like the Mono Blue Control mindset and also playing around it as well. But like when I'm a casual, when I'm a casual table, my brain literally sw switches a, flips a switch and I don't want to deal with certain strategies. Like that's like, I don't want to see uh, a winter orb on or an Urza winter orb deck when I'm just like playing, I don't know, zombie tribal. Like I just, I, I just wanted to have a certain experience and, and those sort of abilities just don't really match up in this tax effect. Going I, I, more think, on I think, 
I think that's like more of a rule zero thing, <laughs> but like, but like specifically, cause like, I mean, everybody has what they don't want to play against. Like if I said, I don't want to see anyone play anything that ramps green. Or, or green, green. Or that ramps, no anything allowed. that plays creatures, <laughs> right? Like that, that it's like, okay, I want my, that experience. So, right. but the thing here is I, I don't, I, I think that the tax effect and all of that, it's just one of those things where in a multiplayer game, even if you want to turn your brain off it, what makes the game fun is like the fact that you have to like, like there's puzzles, right? The puzzles to solve and things to like, to like hoops to go through and jump through. Otherwise we're just playing solitaire. Like if you want to play solitaire, then that, that's, that's, that's a different game. I just think, I think there's certain cards that the vast majority of players consider salty and they don't want to play against. And I feel like taxing effects are very much up there. If you go to the ADH reg, you look at the salt scale, it's what the vast majority of casual players want and don't want to see at their tables. And if you right. see Ristic Study way up there, my fear is that if you keep printing powerful Ristic Study effects, well, guess what? You're going to see them more often because why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you add powerful cards to your deck uh, in these slot everywhere? And that's my fear with Esper Sentinel. It's a very strong card. And it's nice that White got card draw, but this style of effect where it's like the constant, do you pay the X? And people just, we know from just a lot of evidence that people don't play around it properly. It's just incredibly powerful. And you're just going to see it all the time. Like I don't want, I don't want to sit down in every single game and there's always going to be a Rhystic study or two or three or in multiples of Esper Sentinels and multiples of the Smothering Tithe and multiples of the Wandering Archaic and multiples of the Mystic Remoras. It's just like, it's getting, it's getting very quickly to the threshold where it's just kind of obnoxious to me. And I'm kind of afraid because we, we just got Wandering Archaic. We just got Esper Sentinel. Are they planning, is Wizard of the Coast planning more of these? And is that good? Because I, I think it's not. <laughs> I think it's not. I think it's bad. <laughs> so... So how would you rather have white get card draw? Because I know we've been talking about this for like a year and I kind of came down on the side of like, maybe Ristic study effect should be white. Maybe that's a good solution because taxing is like traditionally white. Esper Sentinel feels like a white card to me. It doesn't feel like some other color of card that they just shoehorned into white because white needs card draw. We've seen a lot of their white card draw and ramp attempts fall pretty flat and we just make fun of them and no one plays them this one's actually good like how can they make something on the power level of esper sentinel that's going to help actually help fix white's problems without having it be a tax effect like i've been thinking about that since i knew this was going to be our topic and i haven't been able to come up with a great answer to that so i don't know do you have any ideas why can't i, you I just... think they nailed it more ta- like white oh. should have more of it like, like, I think they nailed it. <laughs> uh, I, I know this is going to be an unpopular opinion. I know the comment section. Well, trust me, I know the comment <laughs> section. Uh, and uh, <laughs> I would say that I think this is exactly what white should have. Tax effects because it does feel white, right? Like this feels very white on the color pie. Uh, after smothering tie this, I mean, I do agree that Ristic study probably should also been white, but whatever. <laughs> like, this is this is exactly how I'd prefer white get its card draw. I'm I'm fine with the quote unquote tax, but it should not be optional, and they should cost it appropriately. It's like whenever a player casts the first non-creature spell, draw a card, period, and make it the right mana cost for that effect, right? And then there you go, <laughs> right? Don't make it like oh, you know, they they have to do this conditional, and we think they'll do it fifty percent of the time, so we'll we'll do it at this mana cost, like no, right? Like no one does it. So just assume that and then cost it correctly. So this should really probably be like- yeah, Is that a white five. card anymore? Like I don't feel, that, that doesn't feel like a white card to me if you're just that like, whenever blue. your opponent has it's, it's a like spell, you draw a card. Collector, right? Like when they draw their second card, you get to draw a card. So you, you know, mean just take uh, a, bad, a, a, a bad blue or black card? Or take a good take a good blue or black card and then nerf it significantly for white. Is that what you're trying to say? <laughs> 
Maybe. I, mean, you, I, I just I don't see... want your one drop drawing like five cards. Balance I know. I don't. Wizards. I don't. I don't want the one drop drawing <laughs> five cards either. It should be a three drop or a five drop or something, and it can draw four cards, right? I see what Richard's getting at, though. If you remove the choice part of it, the illusion of choice yeah. there, yeah. or whatever, like, like there's no it choice just... on Thalia. You pay right. the one, <laughs> right? Like we got to sure. somehow enforce that, so it has to happen, right? Right. And then people can't king make accidentally with this card. There, there, there is no like you know like oh well like I have to sit here and think about it. It's just okay. You do it. I'm gonna draw a card. I would, I would, I would also. I would much prefer that too because I just, I just find the phrase "Do you pay the X?" incredibly annoying if it's happening <laughs> every single turn cycle, every <laughs> single game, and sometimes multiple people doing it. The worst thing in the world is when you have two people with Rhystic Study and it's like, oh, do you pay for the one for this? You do? Okay, but do you pay the one for mine? Okay. No. <laughs> I'm Wait, gonna why not mine? Well, well, you you pulled us out. I'm not paying for time? anything this turn, okay, <laughs> guys? Yeah. Let's storm yeah. off now. <laughs> no, no. Freaking gonna mill them man. out. <laughs> it I, almost, I, I no almost worked. I this find those games out. hilarious. I'm talking. I, actually, I played I, in I a game like, with double yeah. counterbalance, and I'm just like, yo, that's it's stick. fine <laughs> one time. Imagine if counterbalance was played as much as Rhystic Study, though. I that's, feel like you'd hilarious. be hilarious. It would be. I would. I would. I probably quit Commander. Honestly, like if, <laughs> if imagine imagine every single blue deck you played against probably was countertop. Every single blue deck. But you, you do it already, against. right? You play a spell, you look at the blue player, like, does it resolve? <laughs> like, <laughs> so whether they're doing a counterbalance check on top of it or not. Like, I counterbalance check is super obnoxious. annoying. Then you have to wait for them to constantly spin the top and all that nonsense. <laughs> I that's hate true. It. The, the, the top, if you're a slow It's just a constant. They, like, it was literally banned from Constructed. Or what was it? Like, <laughs> uh, Legacy? Like that. Yeah, legacy. It was just annoying. This is annoying. It's an annoying card. That's that's the difference than holding up a full grip of counters, which is also uh, <laughs> its own right. But watching the person spin the top and like, hmm, huh? Well, these three are pretty I, good. Oh, I did play good. counter top <laughs> once <laughs> at a legacy like, event, and geez. and that event I I loved. I've also back when I did judge, I judged a legacy event every end of round, every time. Everybody that's interns. Are miracle players and i always <laughs> laugh hysterically i'm like well let's go see which uh, miracles deck is uh, currently slowing down the tournament let's go find out <laughs> that's that, those are my issues with these stupid tax effects it's like i'm fine with them when they're when they're more appropriately costed when they're more balanced but when they're in what are the when the strongest when they're the strongest cards in the format like top 10 in their respective colors then you're going to see them everywhere and that's Would you where play my tolerance Sentinel completely for three? throws out what if Sentinel were three mana, would you play it? I wouldn't. I would play it. Would you? Yeah. I no, would still I would consider I wouldn't I wouldn't jam in every single white deck, but if I'm like an equipment deck, like my Calder deck, for example, I just slap a sword on this baby. It's good. Mm. It'll, it'll immediately make you pay three that, for uh, each time for three mana. Then, sure. Does that does that end up fixing does that end up fixing white's problems? I almost Don't feel fix like white we're with wizards this. in like a in an impossible situation where we're like, we need white to be better. We need it to be wetter. And they've tried like 20 different ways. And every way they do it, we're like, well, no, like this is horrible. We hate because it. Uh, and is there an answer? You're like, missing is it. It's so easy. It's they, right they there. Seth, you have like 100% win weight with like Boros this season. You don't draw <laughs> cards in Boros. Do you need to really draw cards? When you don't draw cards, cards and Boros? play the cards you have, do you not win more, Seth? <laughs> <laughs> and honestly, when we did the white podcast, I came down kind of in the middle where I didn't think it was that big of an issue. But if you just pulled the community, the community thinks it's an issue. Like if you ask the average commander player, they're going to say that white's horrible and it needs to be better and needs to be improved. So even if we don't think so, I think that's the general like overarching mood of the commander community. Well, I'm, I'm just wondering, like, what is so wrong? with whites drawing cards based off stuff white is traditionally supposed to be good at doing. Like green is allowed to draw cards like based on life. creatures. <laughs> yeah, what if, what if you had a three drop that said whenever you gain life, you draw a card? That's pretty, that, that'd be, I, I would argue say hey, yeah. that would be a lot better than Esther said no. Or, or like an ETB creature that says when this enters the battlefield, you get you draw cards equal to the amount of life you gain this turn. Make it a five drop or something like that. 
Yeah, yeah, you you could play that's, that, but like, you'll be like, oh, it's, well, still, it's a build around me though. Yeah, right? that's it's the like, problem. In a you life, a life deck, deck, it's deck. great, but like Rhystic right. Study, you can just jam in any blue deck, and it's gonna draw you a ton of cards. Right. That's but, like in this very narrow. Would you play it in like Srom or something? No, well, like it's in a very narrow subset of white decks. Even well, well, Srom Srom draws cards based on equipment, so we can have more cards to draw cards based on equipments and, and vehicles and auras. Uh, we have course spirit dancer we have mesa enchantress we have a bunch of stuff that says draw cards based on you know a certain thing that white is good at we have sage's reverie that draws a card for every single aura you have on the battlefield uh which is also fantastic it's very specific it's not generic but you know if you keep adding ways for white to draw cards for each archetype that white is traditionally good at i think that's a, a way to solve any perceived issues with the thing equipments don't even need it you just need to have more tutors so you can tutor up your, your swords and stuff to draw your cards instead, which I think is totally reasonable as well. Mentor of the Meek also exists, right? Like they've, they've said that it was a color pie break back in the day, but they're less, less hard on that now. So you can draw cards based on small creatures. You can draw cards based on uh, tokens. You can definitely make Shamanic Revelation, which is draw cards equal to the number of creatures you control. That should have been a white card. Like white is supposed to be the best that go wide, white weenie and, and tokens and everything like that. Except green is is clearly much superior to that. Just give us a time shifted, uh, a color shifted shamanic revelation. There's so many ways that white can draw cards without being so freaking annoying and obnoxious um, against other players. Like I don't care if you draw 50 cards off the shamanic revelation. Like I'd try to kill you, but it's much better than a one drop that you have no setup or anything. And just, do you pay the one? Do you pay the one? Do you pay the three? Do you pay the five? Do you pay the four? Do you pay the three? Because it's, it's stupid. It's dumb. I hate it. It's stupid. Did I mention I don't like it? Did I mention I don't like it? I don't like it. Ah. So what about what about Smothering Tithe? Are you not I a don't fan? like it either. Like, is it just anything that has that text on it? Like, yes. will you pay the whatever? I don't like it. Oh. <laughs> I, th I, think I think it's very good. <laughs> It's, it's, but like, okay, so what else? White has pretty much lost everything else, right? I, I would say that, you know, blowing up lands is part of white with, with the amount of things <laughs> they've got. Uh, and then, uh, like, you know, like, tax effects feel normal to me. So maybe that's why I'm just okay with white having tax effects that draw cards. But, but white already lost everything. Just give white back the stuff it was good at. Like, well, we you can't go wide, right? Because you oh, could. you can, but but Just like the thing here over, is, move it back to white. White had it before. Small creatures mattered. They had it before. It's just they stopped printing them for some reason. Mentor of the Meek was no longer considered part of the pie. Maybe we should revisit that. Maybe we should say Mentor of the Meek is good actually, and we should print more of them and we should push them a little bit. And same with life gain. Have a uh, instead of black being the best at life gain and stuff, maybe white should be the best, and they draw cards based on it. Like. Like why? Why is it specifically just taxing effects? Like we want like blue cards now, Rhystic Study effects and stuff. So, so the problem is white's identity in sixty card formats is taxing, right? Like this is how you beat the big bad blue decks. You bring your white taxing effects in, and you lock them down, and you kill them, right? And those cards filter their way into commander, right? You can't expect Watsy to print like a, a white mythic that does some crazy tax effect meant for modern and then not expect commander players to play it, <laughs> right? So the, there's this problem where constructed players are fine with the tax and they want the tax, right? Like you need the tax to fight against everything, but you don't want it to spill into the casual tables. But if it's a good card and constructed, it's probably a good card and commander and people are going to play it. So wizards can't really solve this without fixing like white's identity overall. Not right? like smothering tithe. Smothering do you think, do you think Esper Sentinel was made <laughs> for modern? Yeah, it, I Should mean, be. I, mean it's, I think it's really, think it's really, really good modern. in modern. Yeah, but you think they, they made it with modern in mind? Like, no, I mean, it's probably or... a pushed commander card, right? But your Thalia's and like, your Armageddon's and stuff are all constructed originally before they filtered into commander, right? This this looks like it was made with modern in mind, definitely. What, what I would it's mostly geared for commander. Like, I think it's on multiple levels, but if I had to choose one format, I would probably say commander. I also worry about the other side of that, though. Like. Let's say they go, okay, support white going wide. Then you have the risk of like breaking non-commander formats too, because some like, oh, two mana draw a card for each creature you control or something. 
that's probably fine in your commander deck, but that's probably going to be busted in your like Savannah Lions, White Weenie, you know, taxes deck in Soul uh, Sisters constructed format or something. Soul yeah, but you just, I'd you be great Soul Sisters. Soul Sisters. I know that. Print it Seth. in a precon then. Right? Like, Bad you don't it. have to, you don't have to send Bad it from modern. standard like we do for every other card. No, no, the precon, <laughs> the precon decks aren't standard legal or modern legal. So you don't even have to worry about that. You just, and they have like five of those products every single year now. So. I'm sure they could squeeze it into one of those. I feel like Wizards is trying really hard to have white not just draw cards. I feel like they want it to feel white. And I think from Wizards' perspective, just saying like, hey, I get to draw cards has never been what white has done in 27 years of Magic. And they're still trying to avoid doing that. I don't know if that's the right choice, but... I mean, I've I liked think... Mangara. <laughs> that's like may maybe more of more stuff like i mean i don't know that's is that not just another tax effect actually i feel I like mean, that's just a, a no the mangari doesn't ask you do you want to pay the one or whatever you just right you it's just whatever it. the second card you do it i much prefer those i much prefer those so, so yeah so that i guess tie it all back then tax effects should just be replaced with just replace the 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 once again the choice part of it and it's just mandatory and like, that would feel, would you say that would feel less salty? Like just whenever, if like Ristic Study or whatever, whenever an opponent casts a card, you draw a card. Would that make it? Wouldn't that be play? insanely broken though? Yeah, like the, if you didn't have the option to pay the one, isn't that the- right? It's not just right. better. <laughs> you just made then, it stronger. <laughs> but then is it bad? Like, I don't know. That I think, I think good it would if be it's like- Six mana or 10 mana or something. I think an S percentile would be like uh, the- Third spell an opponent casts you turn, you draw a card. Okay, no, I'm deck. just I'm throwing out numbers. I'm just trying to say like you don't have it's you tweak it obviously. Or like the second non-creature spell you cast you turn, or something like this. Uh yeah, the first the first uh non-creature spell each each opponent cast costs one less, and then you could like sacrifice a sentinel to draw a card for each non-creature spell that was cast this turn or something like that. I don't know. Some I, variant I feel, where it's not, not the constant <laughs> nagging of it. I feel like I feel like Forgers. when we I feel you like can hear we all of about, that, right? I feel like when we talked about other recent cards though, like Mangara, I felt like we came down on the side of they're bad because your opponent controls them. And we don't want White's card draw to be something your opponent controls because your opponent has complete control over it. So isn't that it are those two things at odds? Yeah, like, I, pr I much prefer just I I want to be in control. I want to be like whenever I gain life, I draw cards. I don't want that, but apparently that's not that's not uh, in line with, with other people. I, we I'm talked the about this last being, podcast, like, right? Yeah. We, we have all those cards, but people don't like it, right? If you have equipment, you can draw like a billion cards, but you got to play equipment, right? Yeah, and if you have, well, don't like game, that, right? They want the cards? harmonize. They want the sign in blood. They want the painful truths. Like so, whatever strategy I'm running. I just jam this card and I draw some cards and I can continue with my strategy. Well, right? you need that. You do You do need that to an extent. I just think the taxation, this effect of it is just bad. I don't like it. <laughs> I want so something what if, what if it was a five, let's say it was a four mana, four, four with the same ability. Is that acceptable? Now that it it's would, like quote unquote balanced, maybe too balanced that it sucks. But like, is the tax effect okay now, <laughs> right? Yes, because I don't be know. Less popular, so I wouldn't have to but, play with it every single time I shuffle up against a white deck. With Smothering Tide's four mana, Wandering Archaic's five mana. Smothering Tide also is uncapped. It's just whenever anybody draws a card, not even not even the second spell they the second card they drew. It's every single one, and they have to pay two for it. Like the cards, bananas. I, I feel and Wizards balanced it almost appropriately, assuming no one would pay two mana. Right, like the, the assumption that someone's gonna pay two on turn four looks ridiculous. No one's gonna pay, you're gonna get the tokens, right? And I feel like that card was balanced around that fact. Whereas I feel like Wizards expects people to pay the tax at S for Sentinel, <laughs> <laughs> right? Which I don't think anyone will because I don't think they wanted someone to draw like six cards for two turns that this thing is out, right? So I feel that's the difference, right? Same with Wandering Archaic, right? I feel like. You know, Wandering Arcade can be used to team up on people and things like that, right? So I feel those are taken into account. Whereas this one, I don't know what Wizards was thinking, right? They wanted to sell packs. I mean, it, if, it's if, just overly strong. If this was actually designed for modern, I can imagine it being balanced because, you know, like your opponent, you're on D&T or whatever. I don't play modern. I'm just, I'm just guesstimating. 
but your opponent's like, oh, you're on DNT, whatever. Uh, yeah, you can draw a card. I wipe your board. Um, I'm a control player. I'm just gonna win anyway. Yeah, you can draw. You can draw an extra little pay pair or whatever. It doesn't matter. <laughs> like whatever. Like this would this probably would be a lot worse than if it was like a Thalia effect. No, like if this was just like straight up, you have to pay one. Would it not be exceedingly stronger in in modern? Uh, yeah, I, I think it would be stronger in modern that way. I feel just like one it was mana just Thalia. Yeah, one yeah, mana one sided Thalia for only for for non creature spells. First non creature spell. Yeah, like, I think in modern, if, in if you don't play into this it's because you know if you do, you're going to die and you have no one to blame but yourself. Yeah, so you, you are slow. forced to play into it. Right? So you forced. don't have the fear that the next player is going to play into it. You need to play into it to keep up. Yeah. Whereas yeah. that does scales. happen in Commander. Yeah, and it also scales. It has You have more opponents, therefore more opportunities for it to trigger every single turn cycle. Yeah. And then, yeah, then, then the one person who doesn't pay for it or whatever... Uh, it snowballs from there, and then that's it. <laughs> that's I, it. I wonder how much of it is like these cards are just shouldn't be commander cards because a card like Ristic Study is fine in a one v one format. It's not even good in a one v one format. Yeah. So I I wonder how much like I don't know, kind of like some of uh, uh, what is it? Secret plans? Is that the team up card that's banned that we were trade talking secrets. about? Like trade trade secrets? secrets. Like. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe it's just a card that was a heuristic study. Maybe it was designed for 1v1 formats and it just shouldn't be a thing in Commander and we shouldn't be making more of them because it doesn't, it just doesn't translate to a, a four player format very well. I agree. <laughs> Ban them all. <laughs> don't print anymore. That's my, that's my what, thing. What about Mystic Remora? Is that card fine? I don't, even, of, I don't even play that card. It's a big deal, right? Yeah. And keeping of upkeep makes it clear that they're tapping out and they chose to do nothing. So we all just pass the turn as well. We're just at a stalemate, right? Do people play around that card more correctly because it's obvious what's going on? I think so. I, I think you know it's going to go away too. Yeah. And there's yeah. really no option to pay because it's four. So most of the time <laughs> you don't even get, you don't got to think about it because you just don't have four mana. So either your spell's so important that you got to cast it or you just don't cast it. <laughs> I think it's also way easier to convince the table be like, all right, just chill for like two turns, right? Just chill for two turns. Even the person who owns it, they, they still have to pay the cumulative upkeep costs. So even if they're keeping it around, that they're not advancing their board as quickly as like if they had a risk study on the battlefield because they're investing their mana into keeping the remora around so literally if you just chill everybody chills with the remora on the battlefield you can also you could also just cast your creatures too uh and that's fine so you can still do something but if everybody just agrees don't cast non-creature spells until the remora is gone i think that's a much easier sell than one that doesn't have a cumulative upkeep it's a much tougher sell for the sentinel so is the answer add cumulative upkeep to everything <laughs> I would, I, I would. Esper Sentinel with the vanishing counters on it, <laughs> vanishing I, two Esper Sentinel. Ooh, that would have been a nice I, thing. Uh, let Let me go. Let me go. Devil's Advocate for a second uh, with with Esper Sentinel. So Esper Sentinel, it only can ever draw you one card a turn. So that's a big difference between Mystic Remora and the other things. It's also a creature rather than an enchantment, which means the odds of it dying are a lot higher compared to Ristic Study. Is it? Is this card okay power level wise? Like, uh, I know it's annoying to have to keep asking, pay the one, just like it's annoying to have to keep shuffling after you fetch and having that slow down the game. But is it actually just like too busted in the way that it's that it's currently printed? No, nah, I don't think power level wise this is busted at all. I, I I think mostly this is just a salt miner, right? Like that that's that's all it is. <laughs> like other than that, I it just. It's a one one. <laughs> like, sure, it gets a little bit bigger here and there. It might draw a card or, or like, it, it, it's the drawing the card, but like, eh, that, that's fine to me. Just Lavadar it. Commander All Star, Lavadar. <laughs> I don't know. I don't, you, guys you, are think, you think this is broken yeah, power level? Okay. I think it's too strong. What, I don't think What are the odds you study, have but... spot removal and opening hand? Chances are you needed to dig for it. You need to get some card draw. You need to tutor for it. You're just feeding it immediately. It's a one drop. Well, like there's so little it's, opportunity cost. It's non-creature, right? 
ability. Yeah, you play creatures, Grim. I, I don't, I don't, I don't. But like, so it's not like it slows down the aggro player at the table, right? The aggro player is like, okay, true. have fun, have a blast. Like, what? you know what I mean? Like, How's you going to cast me... Elving Dagger without feeding it? <laughs> oh, that is true. But like <laughs> rampant growth, soul ring, like literally anything you do is probably a non-creature besides like lawnmower elf on the first couple turns. And those are the turns where you can't afford to pay the tax. Right. So I mean if you draw this late game, yeah, maybe this card sucks. Right. But if it's in my opening hand, I'm prepared to be arch enemy immediately. It's as good as like a soul ring opener to me, right? Like you put this down, you draw a bunch of cards and draw aggro. Right. I, I do think this card is very it. good on one. Like that'll be when it's at its best. And even yeah. then, I don't think it's like something I need to ban. It would just be like very powerful. But but I, I feel like more often than not, this is just good. Like, how often do you have a turn one soul ring? How often am I gonna have a turn one sentinel? I don't know. Like <laughs> I I don't I don't that think it's ban worthy. Well, I mean, I would want I would want like all these just gone from my plague groups, but I don't think it's like ban worthy. Like we're not uh, talking about rule zeroing, like all of that. Like I'm just talking about sheer power level. This doesn't feel like it hits the power level where I need to. Well, get do you think Ristic Study is ban worthy on sheer I power do. level? Uh, I think it's too strong. It's cl- uh, I think it's okay. It, it's closer. It's closer to getting banned than Sentinel, but I don't think it's bannable. I, like I, I'm, but you've seen on our, our on what I think should and shouldn't be banned on that podcast. I'm very accepting of a good amount of power levels, and like, and I, and I mean at casual levels of play too. So I don't know. Maybe like, I, I don't think any of that's ban ban worthy. I mean, I feel like as. Hmm. I feel like Esper Sentinel is way worse than Ristic Study. Like, not really? even, not even especially close. Like, really? Ristic Study triggers multiple times a turn, right? Oh, oh, and, oh, worse as in, is worse power level. Yeah. So I was like, it's much yeah. worse for the format. I'm like, oh, what? Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> oh, as far okay. as they're, they're similar as far as the format, yeah, but yeah. as far as power level, I mean, Ristic Study triggers on anything and it triggers right. multiple times a turn. As for Sentinel, it feels like. On turn one, it's great, but in the mid to late game, if you're just paying one extra mana for your entire turn, that's not really that powerful. Like, sure, you can pump it and make it better, but if it's not pumped to to have higher power, I don't know. Hmm? Do, you, do you pay the one for Ristic Study when you, what, what, you, what have, a car, a you have a card draw it? spell in your hand? <laughs> you this, is, this is the conundrum. <laughs> Remember, you, you, you have a card draw spell in your hand. You have like eight mana. You have 10 mana. You have 20 mana, right? You have 20 mana. Uh, you have a card yep. draw spell in your hand. Uh, you cast the card draw spell. You don't pay the one because you're going to draw some cards. What if that's more card draw or non-creature <laughs> spells or something like that? So you don't pay for the one for that. You find another card draw spell. So you cast it's, that. It's, it's fine. You only draw one for S yeah, so That's a Ristic like, study problem. It doesn't matter how much mana. <laughs> that's a Ristic study problem. But yeah, yeah, you're not gonna pay the one because you have more cards to cast, right? Yeah, it's yeah, it's. I, I think the one is still is incredibly hard. I don't think it's as strong as Ristic study. I don't. Because I don't I think like it's it definitely is, not as strong as Ristic study. I, I feel you but guys are gonna absurd. ban this. You you guys will ban this by the end of the season. I'm already tilted by it, honestly. Right. <laughs> I, I will have it out every game. Every also, game, it will come out because I can tutor it up like 8,000 ways in white and boros. So you will see it like every game and I will put a sword on it and you will not pay any taxes. And I will be drawing like eight cards a turn because of the sword and because of this thing. Well, hopefully we'll remove it. I mean... Yeah, you're going you're gonna to have to use those Hagra volleys and stuff to get rid of it. What if I use Valkyrie <laughs> Rebirth though, bro? Like, yeah. <laughs> I, I if, this was, if this was in blue, it would actually be even more obnoxious because like my main, my main issue with Rusic Study is that because you're in blue uh wizards of the coast just loves printing free counter magic and every single free counter magic that comes up makes risk study even stronger because as you draw more cards the higher likelihood you have a free counter spell to protect the risk study so even run more removal becomes more and more of a tricky situation for you and that's another reason why i hate risk study is like not only do you feed it but when you do have a removal spell chances are there's going to be a Fierce guardianship, a pact of negation, you know, force of will, or something like that to stop it. At least God's will thing. More specific. Whatever the yeah. MDFC is, which I don't remember the name. Sejiri Sejiri shelter. shelter. But that, okay, that okay, costs okay. two mana. What if you had an opening hand with an enlightened tutor in it? Would you tutor at the end of turn one for this and put it into play? Yes. Ooh. I don't think so. Yeah. 
I, I, I might. It would depend on the rest of my hand, obviously. Really? But it would depend mean, what, what I, your opponents are on. Like, if somebody's on Toroff Burn, then I'd be like, no. <laughs> but, <laughs> yes, obviously, I feel like, outside of. <laughs> it, and it also depends on if you're playing first or not. Like, I feel like if you get this down before your opponents go to their turn two, when everyone's going to need to cast their ramp spells, someone's going to let you draw cards off of it. I'm going to let you draw cards off of it because I'm casting my ramp spells. So so I feel like if you can get it down before people start casting their turn two ramp, then it's going to be insane. Yeah. I have nothing more to add, but I think this will be bad. I, I feel it's really good. In, I mean, our, in, our, group, in good. our group. I, I, I feel I white is already pretty strong without this, and I feel... You guys are gonna hate this card pretty soon enough because you can. I hate it this off. card already. What do you mean? I'm gonna... but, but you will always see it, right? Like you're like, oh, it's only good in the early turns. But I have lots of ways of getting it into play on the early turns. That's the problem. Just, just well, guys like Ranger of Eos or whatever, and Lightning Tutor. Yeah, the fact that it's an artifact too is kind of. Kind of you sad. already know I, I'm I'm gonna be okay with it, but I have a high tolerance <laughs> for a lot of cards. It's it's more like it's more it, more for me it's it's not only just how powerful it is but it's how popular it is that that's what really gets me. Well, like, it's going to be expensive. Do you think it's going to be popular because it's so expensive? That's one. That's the only thing that's going to really hold it back. But I still think it's going to see like fifteen percent of all all decks are going to have Esper Sentinel or something like that. It's going to be like I think it's going to be up there with Opposition Agent in terms of popularity, despite Opposition Agent also being like a twenty dollar card or whatever out of out of the reach of some people. So what if it turns out it's not good and people aren't playing it in like every deck? Is it fine then? Yes. <laughs> right? Because you're not, you're be not going to sit down at every table and people are not going to ask if you pay the X. Yes. Right? That, that's that's my just like issue. Fasa's Oracle is quote unquote fine because people don't bring it into casual groups because it's a try hard card. Right? So they don't, they don't play it. That's a hundred percent me. Like if I didn't have to deal with it every single game, then my tolerance for it is is way higher. But the more I see it, I just get it just gets very tedious for me. That's that's the honest truth for me. Is like if a card is both obnoxious for me to play against and I see it all the time, then my tolerance for it goes way down and it and it gets tilting. Well, maybe it'll be maybe it'll be less good than we're thinking. But I I agree with you. Guys don't think it's good, right? <laughs> you guys are like Luke Warm on tutoring it up on turn one, which means you don't think it's that good, right? <laughs> I said I said yes, but if if you're up against creature focused decks, uh, then it gets worse. Like if I'm up against Chulane, a Toshiro Umazawa deck, and a Toroff deck, I'm not gonna tutor it up. <laughs> I'm I mean, sure, you're gonna but die like ninety-five percent of the time you would I, tutor it up. Yeah, right? yeah, most of the time well, I tutor it up. Yeah. There's, but Seth and Krim were lukewarm though. on it, so they don't like, think it's that strong. Yeah. Right? You got <laughs> other things you can tutor up with that. You're spending your tutor. Yeah. Like, I, I would I tutor it over him. Dowsing Dagger. Right? I got to think about it. I'm like, Ooh. I don't know. I got one Enlightened yeah. Tutor. Do I get the Dowsing Dagger or do I get the Esper Sentinel? That's a hard Ooh. one. You'd be letting down your fans if you didn't get Dowsing That's Dagger. That's a hard one. But to me, it's that level where I got to think about it. I, I would take I, the Dowsing Dagger, 100%. The, the beauty is I could play this on turn one, equip a Dowsing Dagger, make you pay three, <laughs> smack you, and then and triple ramp while I'm at it. <laughs> I mean, I do plan on putting in every mono white deck for the time being until proven otherwise. Yeah. So I do think it's, I think I do think it's strong enough Just to play Just mono white, it, though? So. Not, not multicolored decks? Maybe Boros. But I feel colors. like... I don't think this is good card draw. I think it's good card draw for white, but I don't. I think it's way, way worse than like Ristic Study and spells like Ooh. that. So, so if this was if black I have access or red, to... you wouldn't play this. I'm not like putting this uh, in Esper, right? Like there's there's no not. need to put this in Esper, right? Like I think black, I think tough. has enough other card draw options that I don't think I yeah. would play this in black if it was a mono black card or blue. I wouldn't. Like... Red maybe. Boros is a color combination where I would consider it, but green glorious. No, I, I put it in it. Selesnia, I put it in Orzov, I put it in Boros. I put it basically, I'd also put it in Wouldn't Azorius. Selesnia... I mean, why not? Azorius doesn't need this. Azorius has it numerous. Doesn't need it, but it's a good card. Like, does Azorius need but... necessarily Ristic Study? It probably doesn't. Like, no, but like that, draw, but Azorius but would, would want that because Ristic Study is good enough, right? This, like, this goes into certain strategy of Azorius, maybe like Azorius humans or like, I don't know critters like my my Ineos deck but like that that's about it i'm not this isn't going to just be a vanilla card that goes into all my azorius decks e I and i also don't even know if i'd put this in selesnia because the green would carry the card draw there because green has that the better card draw but this is i just look at this as a, as a one drop that's going to draw me probably two cards on average per per game and that's on a low estimate 
Dude, I'm putting this in like, my human's fine. deck. I'm putting this in my human's deck, and that's pretty much it. I don't have a mono white deck, so I don't know. Like, uh, any two color I, white, I would actually I'm play this in all decks if it was colorless. Even my three color? is I'd play it in blue, I would play it in black. I'd play I would I, even what? three colors. What about three? Wow, I, I definitely color? would not. I mean, if. Okay, if I can't cast this, I'm not going to play it, right? But I'm if I can cast it and it's a one drop, I think yeah. the effect is strong enough that it was like a model blue card, I put in blue decks. Yeah, I would too. I would put it I would I put a Mystic really Study either. on turn one that can die to Doom Blade. But it's, I, it's, I, it's, I it's not as good as a Ristic Study. Of course that's, it's that's not, why. but Ristic Study is like a 20 out of 10. I'll take a 15 out of 10, right? I'll take an 11 out of 10, right? Yeah, like, I'm, I'm, I'm okay running, running, Ristic Study. I'm okay I'm running slightly worse Ristic Study if the slightly worse is still absurd. Yeah. I, I I'm more with Krim. I'm more with Krim where like, I think it's good for white because white has such a horrible source of card advantage. Like it's just so <laughs> bad at drawing cards, but for like other colors that are good at drawing cards, I think this is actually like, meh, like it's fine. Maybe okay. some decks where it's on theme, I'd play it, but yeah, I, I don't think it's a, that level I'm, of a staple, honestly. I, I, I agree with Seth in that yeah, like, yeah, like something like Boros. To be. Sure. I'm going to be playing a lot of white decks for the rest of the season. I'm just letting you know right now. <laughs> it's going to be Crim versus all white decks. <laughs> Seth is a white like to pay the one now. on your counterspell, Crim? Would you Sober, like to pay the one on your force player. negation, Crim? No? Oh, that's Yo, you're still going to be salty when your spell gets uh, countered if he pays the one or not. Yeah, yeah. Would you like to pay the one on the all breacher? Would you like to pay the one on the wheel? Uh, <laughs> like, yeah, I'll pay one uh, on the mana uh, trade. I'm fine all with breacher, sure. All breacher gets around yeah. us. Just yeah, like, <laughs> oh, that's right. He's just going to hold me. No. Oh, casting like, the whole creature though. What? When Cast? it's it's a cast trigger, so when it's on, it's still no, on it's the a stack, creature spell right? though. It's the creature, oh, yeah, it's creature yeah, spell. Okay. Yeah, yeah. King it, king it. <laughs> All right, you win this time. Good thing Hall Breach is banned though. So yeah, exactly. It's, Oops, it's banned. It's banned. That's, it's all, banned. that's only for this season though. Next season, who knows? <laughs> oh, I <laughs> intend to it keep it that way. <laughs> I intend to keep it that way. All right. Um, <laughs> So, uh, did we reach a verdict on on whether or not we want to see more of it? Can we just have a, a quick uh, roundabout, uh, starting with, I guess, Richard? Do you want to see more of these tax effects? Yes or no? No, and I think the card is really good. Okay, Seth, what do you think? Until Wizards finds a better way of making white card draw, uh, I'm going to go with yes. I, I hope they find they crack the white card advantage problem in a way that makes everyone happy, but I think it's the best solution they've come up with so far. So I'm okay with them. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, and uh, I think yes, because they have cracked how to get white card draw <laughs> and it makes it so that white can be and like, if they print more of it, which I hope they do, people will respect white more. <laughs> like even because at least for the salt <laughs> levels I, is, is, is hate a form of respect hey hey <laughs> it is yes <laughs> yes it is it is actually yes it is <laughs> is that is that the type of respect that we want in the i respect <laughs> vale i respect summer. i respect your I deck so much that, that i don't want to play against it that's a lot of respect. Form of respect i leave <laughs> I respect it too that's, much. I can't. I, I respect it too much that I can't play against it. Krim, I'm sorry. That's a lot of respect. <laughs> yeah, a lot of respect. Um, <laughs> all right, sweet. Um, and then yeah, I I don't want. I don't want more of this. If you make more of these, make them worse, please. Not not this push. Um um. This yeah. is the only time we we've been on the full spectrum, and we have like four different opinions, <laughs> and we're like literally on the whole spectrum of how good and how much we like or dislike this card i think that's good that's that's why why our podcast mix kind of works i think um but yeah that's that's our piece on esper sentinel and taxing effects in general including rhystic study mystic remora wandering archaic smothering tithe and the many many more cards we're sure to be expecting in oh, 2021 yeah. 2022 2023 and so on um let us know in the comments section below uh, what you think about Esper Sentinel, these tax effects in Sentinel and in in general, uh, and you know how their role are in white, and if you want to see more of them, and if not, you know what variants of them would be more acceptable to you, and so far, so forth, and so on. Uh, please sure to subscribe, like, share, Spotify, click the dingle dangle if Spotify has it. I don't know. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for joining us. And that's it, everybody. So until next time, friends.
See ya. Thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, help us out by clicking the like button down below. And to keep up with the latest and greatest, make sure to click the subscribe button. And if you want to watch similar videos, click on the links appearing on screen right now.